There are three kinds of anointings that every believer must experience. If the anointing is the spirit of God coming upon a man, then there are three dimensions of the spirit in the life of a believer. There is the spirit in you. There is the spirit with you. And there is the spirit upon you. Three dimensions of the anointing. There is the spirit in you. There is the spirit with you. And then there is a spirit upon you. Did you catch it? Because God can't accept anything from you without an anointing. Anything that God will accept must have an anointing on it. Even going to heaven, you must be anointed for it. How? By receiving Christ. The word Christ is the anointed one with his anointing. So, the anointing in you comes when you receive the anointed one, Christ. So, everyone is anointed. As long as you're born again, you have a measure of anointing. Come on, say, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. But now, the anointing in you is only heaven bound. But on earth, you need more grace. You can be anointed but still fornicate. The anointing in you doesn't help you in these mundane affairs. The anointing in you is the deposit, the seal. Please understand, the anointing in you is to give you the guarantee that you are marked for heaven. You are accepted in the beloved. You can enter the presence of God. All right? The anointing with you is for fellowship. For development of the character of Christ. The anointing with you is for fellowship and the development of the character of Christ in you. That's a higher dimension now. Now you've developed the anointing in you to be the anointing with you. That's the time you realize I should not lie. I should not exaggerate. Ah, this, this thing they call anger is not of God. The anointing with you now, that's what? Gives you the character of Christ. Hello? Are you getting it? Now, all of a sudden, you have a thirst and hunger to serve God. You see people singing, you're like, no, I think I can do better. You see people ushering, say no. You see prayer, you want to, it's the anointing for fellowship and development of the character of Christ in you. It takes the anointing to say no to ungodliness. Look at Titus chapter 2 verse 11. This is the anointing that develops that thing that says no to sin. It is the anointing that develops that love for Christ in you. It's the anointing with you. With. With. Look at it, Titus chapter 2 verse 11, sir. Titus chapter 2 verse 11. Sir, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation. That grace is also anointing. Mm. That bringeth salvation. Yes. To all men. Has appeared to all Has men. Has appeared to all men. Verse 12. Teaching, teaching us. us. That denying and godliness. Teaching us to say no. Mm. Teaching us to say no. Yes. Teaching us. The anointing with you is for fellowship. And development of the character of Christ. That's what the more you pray, the more you read the word, the more you attend service like this and you're taught the word, the anointing with you gets stronger, gets deeper, gets more real. Praise God. Then there is the anointing upon. This is for function. That's why one is anointed to preach. Another one is anointed to do business. Another is anointed for politics. Is the anointing upon. That is for function. Anointing in is for heaven. Anointing with is for fellowship and the development of the character of Christ in you. Anointing upon, this one you can catch now, is for function. In Exodus chapter 35, you see there are people who were anointed for business. They were anointed to work with furniture, with gold, with silver and brass and curious works. That was the anointing that was upon them. 
That means any time they make a chair, everyone will buy it. Why? They were anointed for it. Abba. I want us to think beyond church. Anointed is for all of us cannot preach here. Oh. But you can be anointed for business. You can be anointed for politics. You can be anointed as a nice, a powerful, powerful chef. You can be anointed as a border border guy. And every day when you enter into that Okada, you get clients. You are anointed. In fact, there are people even who leave their cars just to enjoy your Okada. Wow. This is path. You are anointed. Then you do border, you do border, you do border, you do border. As the anointing increases, you start adding borders. By the time you know you have a hundred of them, you stop, you stop now riding bike. Now you're managing a hundred borders. Why? You are anointed. Don't, don't despise anointing. Amen. Anointing can make you sell stones. And with stones you become a millionaire. Anointing. Amen. So don't despise Okada. Ah! <laughs> you can be an anointed barber. And that, your, whatever in you're doing, can buy you houses in current. People will be flying from Bangui, from US, from Japan, for a shay. Why you are at something about your hands. And there is nothing you are doing that is extraordinary. You are doing the same thing. Presidents call you. One shave, 100,000. Monday you are in Morocco. You are shaving the king there. Tuesday you are in Lagos. Wednesday you are in South Africa. Thursday you are doing Europe. Thursday, Friday you are doing Europe. Just for shave. Saturday now you come for appointment for Kenya. For people like us now. You also shave us. <laughs> Hello. Eh? In one week, one million has entered. Why? You are anointed. You are anointed. You are anointed. I pray. I pray. I pray. Whatever you do, let the anointing come upon it now. Let the anointing come upon it now. Let the anointing come upon it now. Somebody say, Lord, anoint my business. Remember, it is that undefined, mysterious something that is magnetic, that comes upon a man, a place or a thing. You become irresistible.